probably kick off now. We've got a, a good chunk of people in, on our attendee list. So those who are straggling in post lunch in central time, then they'll get to, uh, again, miss all the tech issues that I had. So thank you everyone for, for attending today's web chat. We're very excited. We have an amazing guest online. Very happy to have Eric Silverman, who's founder of Voluntary Disruption, as well as Adam Michaels, who is the founder of Enrollify. And I'm looking at forward to hearing more about Adam. I've known Eric for, it feels like, feels like just yesterday, Eric, but it's probably been almost a year that, but we've been uh, partnering together and, and you've been sharing your expertise with BCS. So thank you so much again for, for doing this for us. And with that, I will just pass the ball over so you can introduce Adam and, and get started. All right, you got it. Well, hey, rock stars. I'm Eric Silverman, founder and owner of Voluntary Disruption. Um, we are a boutique broker's broker. Some might call us a voluntary GA. I consider us more of a marketing agency that just happens to get paid through the facilitation, sale, and installment of uh, enhanced benefits, uh, or as a lot of us still remember them as uh, voluntary benefits. Um, and I'm joined today with my, uh, my OG, the OG mentor, this guy, taught my sales school, my sales training when I was a wee bitty baby green as can be intern back in like the late, late, late nineties. Adam, you remember that, man? You don't remember that. I do. I do. I had a lot more hair and was probably 40 pounds lighter, but. Well, I wasn't going to mention that. Um, I wasn't going to mention that, but since you did, <laughs> uh, I can't argue. Uh, so look today, guys, we're excited to have <clears throat> you here. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, how COVID has forever changed the employee benefits landscape. Uh, so BCS, uh, this is their first of, uh, of many web chat series that we're going to be doing that I'm going to be helping them with in 2022. Um, and today we're going to be discussing the profound implications that COVID has had on the way we live and work and the adjustments that employers and their broker advisors must make to their strategies surrounding employees, employment, engagement, and and benefits. And before we really get into this, because I have a number of questions I'm excited to ask you, Adam, um, you know, one thing uh, is for sure, there's going to be a number of takeaways. Um, but before we get started, everybody, if you're not already, I think you are, but if you're not already connected with Adam uh, or myself or BCS, please check everybody out. Uh, do us the, uh, the courtesy of checking us out on LinkedIn, hit that connect button, hit that follow button. Uh, and if you're not already familiar with BCS Financial, check them out. They're our generous host today, hosting this cool party, bcsf.com. In my opinion, 23 years in the business, they are one of the best kept secrets in the enhanced or the voluntary employee be uh, benefits industry. So Adam, let me ask you a question, you know, uh, and I, I just wanna, let's just, let's just hit the elephant in the room, right? The big elephant in the room, in my opinion, when it comes to the coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it right now, um, is how it's become this big political issue. You know, I um, uh, we got to advertise to let all of our guests know that we're going to be putting this, uh, this web chat series together. And I made a, a post. You made a post. We all made posts. Even some of you that joined were kind enough to, kind enough to share our posts. And we posted on a number of platforms. And on one of the social media platforms, I just posted, hey, we're having this great webinar. Here's the topic. Here's the takeaways. Come on and listen. And, um, and I had it, probably more than one, but we had one notable comment that was insane. And it really just kind of, I'm not going to share the person or the platform, but it just said, why are we still discussing this quote unquote nonsense? COVID, um, COVID this, COVID that, stop the chaos, get out of your house, go to work, right? Um, things are never going to be the same. Uh, I think they might have missed the point. That's kind of sort of what we're talking about. Let's move on. And, and uh, Adam, talk to us about that, man. Address that elephant in the room. Yeah, I mean, I think, well, uh, you know, obviously, and one, thanks. Uh, thanks to you and BCS, uh, both for inviting me to be part of this. I think, um, I mean, to answer your question, I think we're in probably the most, if one of the most polarized times in our nation's history, if not, you know, the most, uh, obviously, probably the Civil War was, you know, more of a, of a, of a place just by its nature. Um, but we're, we're at this place like where politically, um, you know, we've never had the power of social media to um, amplify the differences of, of perception. And I think, I mean, there's a million places that we go down the rabbit hole of like why or what's going on. Um, but I think that our, you know, the, the, the conversation when you brought this up to me, like I wasn't expecting people to like lose their mind and turn this into a, you know, into a political issue. Um, I think in our industry, 
COVID is probably the biggest single event uh, when it comes to financial insecurity since September 11th, right? And September 11th had profound impact on our society, probably more on the way we board planes and security and things of that nature. But here we are 20 years later, still taking our shoes off when we get off a plane or when we get on a plane. And I think that this is a defining moment for our industry to reimagine pretty much everything. And, um, you know, I think it's foolish to think, oh, we're just going to go back to the way they are. And so if you, if you, you know, if you follow the directions of that poster um, and you just get out of your house and you go to work and you don't actually step back and look at the profound implications, you know, one, you're not going to be serving your clients. Two, you're not going to be serving your own business uh, because you're not responding to the actual dynamics that are out there in the market. Um, and so I think, I think that's, that's what I would, I would say about that. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's, to me, it's crazy. So let's dig in, right? How does all that you just said, and I completely agree, how does that, uh, or I should say, what does that actually mean to the specific workplace uh, in, in detail? If you, if you might uh, give us some, uh, some, some clarity. I mean, I think, um, I think there's a, a new set of realities, right? I think, I think this like moment in time um, really caused companies to have to like, you know, chaos creates a certain level of focus, right? Like, and all of a sudden our whole world was thrown upside down. Everything that we knew to be normal was completely, you know, like all of a sudden, like nobody was able to leave their house. You, you know, everyone thought that someone was going to sneeze on an apple and grandma was going to die. I mean, those early parts of COVID, like the first couple of months before we got exhausted by it and we were like, enough is enough already. Like, when are we, like, everything shut down because we didn't know what is a pandemic. Like, none of us lived through the bubonic plague, right? And so I think what it meant was there was a new, like, uh, list of, of realities that uh, we're dealing with, right? You had people all of a sudden that were not coming into a company, into an office. You had, uh, you had new anxieties, you had a sense of disconnection, you had, um, you know, uh, people that um, then from there, you had this, this spiraling of other things, like people realizing, I don't want to commute anymore, or maybe that job that I had was not furnishing me the quality of life that I needed, and maybe if I could live on less, I could downsize, or I could leave the city that I'm living in, and all of a sudden live somewhere else, um, you look at what happened in Florida, how many people moved from the New York area to Florida, or how many people moved from California to Texas, how many people moved to Boise, Idaho. Um, and, you know, all of these types of things, whether it's new anxiety or disconnection or working remotely or reassessing, like those are all realities that human resources are, are, are focused and dealing with right now. Um, and I think in our industry, like if you don't take into consideration those things, as you approach your, you know, approach your strategy, then you're failing your clients. I mean, and I'll just eat, like, there are other things that are at play, right? I mean, there are now for the first time in history, there's five generations in the workforce. So, um, you know, in the benefits world, we've seen, you know, the first kind of people, you know, graduating off of Obamacare, right? So like this first generation of, of kids that are now turning 26, 27, uh, that, you know, are coming into the workforce going, what the hell do I do this whole benefits thing? I've been on my parents' coverage for all these years. Um, you've got more people that are living, working, you know, well into their 60s that are trying to navigate, am I going to stay on, you know, my health benefits or am I going to Medicare? And um, I think, you know, there's a, there's a real call for hyper-personalization, right? This need for, and I think that, that COVID exacerbated some of that. Um, and I think also in an, in an effort to do the humane thing, the government stepped in and helped a lot of people. Um, and, but I think you would be remiss not to acknowledge that we likely overstimulated the economy, which has led to inflation, which is also probably leading to a certain level of reset, right? Like, you know, um, the money's not going as far and how are we going to deal with increasing salaries and, you know, what's that going to do to the economy? When the inflation happens, usually there's a cooling off. And um, I think I think we're all kind of waiting for it. You see Wall Street's waiting for it. So, I mean, all these things are, are really an issue that have caused us to re have to re-examine human capital, how we manage it, and, and how we address, you know, benefits, which is the space we're in. 
So, so let's, I mean, obviously uh, all that is, is extremely relevant and accurate. And I, I got to imagine at this point, anybody on this call today or anybody who's going to be listening to the recording playback, and we appreciate you for doing that. Um, I would assume they're going to have um, a mostly agreeing state of uh, mind when it comes to everything you just said, but let's dig in on the workforce, right? Let's talk about some, some ideas and things that, that you believe uh, employers should be doing, could be doing, or at least need to know about. And uh, really, if you're able, maybe even tie in how the advisors, brokers, uh, carrier reps, uh, independent folks that are on this call uh, may be able to help in that, in that world. Well, I think, I think we all have preconceived notions about what everything I just talked about, like if you try to play the movie all the way to the end, and you try to see, okay, well, what does remote work actually mean, um, you know, to in the bigger scheme of things? Well, you know, my gut instinct initially, I think probably when this all first happened, is like product, productivity is going to go off a cliff, um, you know, and, and if you, you know, out of sight, out of mind, like there's going to be all sorts of disconnection. And, um, and I think that, you know, I immediately shut down my office. I'm not racing to open up an office. I got eight employees. They're spread out all over the place. What it does is it massively expands your opportunity to recruit talent, right? Like no longer am I stuck with only the talent that's within a certain amount of miles from my business location. Um, but I have to figure out how do I attract those people? How do I find them? How do I source them? How do I interact with them? Um, and I think what it's, what it's, what, you know, in my core is, and I'll steal the Gary, you know, Vaynerchuk thing is, I think every company has to realize that they're a media company first and then whatever they do after that, right? So you need to have media relations, uh, you know, and, 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 and I use that word loosely, but communication um, that is reaching people wherever they are. I think that's probably the, the, the core, the biggest thing is you have to find a way in this new normal uh, to differentiate and, and to win. And it starts with talent. Right, because the organization with the best talent is always going to win, and so I've seen a lot of you know um, organizations are saying like I don't you know I, I really I don't babysit my employees like I treat them like adults, right? Like my expectation is that you get the work done and you can work when you want how you want. But the interesting thing is the research is showing that productivity is going up, right, um, and that people's quality of life is getting better. Because if I can go and take a walk in the middle of the day, and so what does that mean for you as a business? As a benefit, what are you doing differently? Are you sending them boxes of snacks? Are you sending, you know, like, is the benefits world expanding beyond, you know, the old kind of like, okay, here's my list of voluntary benefit programs that go along with my core, core solutions. And as advisors, are we talking about these things that can build loyalty to the organization um, beyond, you know, a, you know, a critical illness policy or, you know, a, a, a core benefit solution. And I think that's probably where the biggest change has happened. Um, I think products are becoming commoditized and I think it's strategies that are really the differentiator in our industry. So uh, I think he's got to hop off soon. If he's still here, I'd love for him to hear the answer to your question. Guys, if you have questions, please, like Bruce Shutan did, my good friend on the West Coast uh, added a question there. So Adam, I'm sure you can see it. I'll read it if anybody is uh, just driving or listening. Uh, to what extent was COVID a trigger for the great resignation and ultimately a silver lining for greater awareness mm -hmm. about the power of both core and and enhance benefits. And Adam, uh, if you don't know Bruce, Bruce is a um, freelance journalist with all the industry trade publications. So no pressure there. Look, I mean, I think, I think companies have to start to have a greater awareness that we can't measure ourselves by how, um, by our success, by how long talent stays, but more importantly, measure our success by what they see after they, after they leave, right? Um, this is one of like my core tenets and beliefs is that, your organization is really about creating advocates out there that amplify your message to the market. So you can attract talent, um, you know, through word of mouth and through networks and relationships and everything else. And so I think, you know, where this speaks to voluntary benefits is portability and things of that nature. I think that becomes more important as the population becomes increasingly transient, but that's nothing new under the sun, right? We, we've watched, you know, the, the duration of people staying at a company shrink 
pretty significantly over recent years. Like the average employee, I think, stays 4.4 years. But when you look at Google, the average employee at Google is less than three years. Why? Because they go and get what they want and they move on to something else. I think what is happening to a certain extent is that the promise of corporate America has fallen short, right? Like this idea that I'm going to be loyal to a company, I'm going to stay here in perpetuity forever, uh, doesn't match with today's kind of, you know, worldview. And I, so I think more and more people are looking for other opportunities to fulfill other parts of their, of their you know, interests and, and, you know, have a career that kind of satiates their soul as well as their pocketbook. And, you know, it's, it's a reprioritization to a certain extent. So I, I, think, I think, again, broadening the word benefits, and, and I think probably the biggest thing that changes, we got to get rid of the word work site. Because there is no work site anymore. Like that, like this idea that there's a place, I mean, sure, in factories and things of that nature, there's still a, a work site. But a lot of, we're a service society. And in service businesses, you know, what's happened is the acceleration of the adoption of technology, like the one we're using right now, has dramatically changed the landscape of what a, what a business looks like. Um, I think that, that, that you know, uh, real estate is going to change. I think we're going to see big moves in the kind of the environment that companies have in order to attract people. But uh, I know I'm rambling a little bit, but I think those are the things that we ha that, that's changing in the, in the benefit space. I, I do think that, that voluntary benefits or essential benefits or, you know, call it whatever you want, they're becoming more and more commoditized, right? There's a hundred different accident plans. There's a hundred different, you know, CI plans and they all have some like, you know, twist or bend. But I think what's, I think what's more interesting is how companies are really positioning themselves uh, to deliver more value to that client beyond just the product, right? And I, and, and I think a lot of that has to do with amplification and communication and, and, and really how do you get the employees engaged? Well, well, that dovetails perfectly. And Bruce, I hope that answers your question. I appreciate you, my friend. Uh, anybody has questions, please go ahead and use the Q&A chat box or the actual chat box, whichever is easier for you. We're monitoring it. And we'd love to get some uh, interaction between the uh, 20 plus that are on this call. Um, and uh, while I have you, again, thank you to our generous host, BCS Financial. Uh, I've known these guys for quite a while. And uh, I, I truly believe they're one of the best kept secrets in the employee funded voluntary space, accident, CI, uh, et cetera. Um, so Adam, let me ask you this. You talk about employee communication. You're, you're, we, we, I wanna get to engagement. Um, from a company perspective, from a human resource uh, practitioner perspective, uh, what are they doing to communicate and engage and how or what can a broker be doing to help, as you, to use your word, I like that word, to help amplify their message? So I, I, you know, um, and let me preface this by saying the problems that have always existed still exist, right? The cost of benefits is going up at two, at two times the rate of inflation and three times the rate of wages. Containing costs is still a primary concern of, you know, of CFOs everywhere. Um, I think there's still a need to try and, you know, increase employees' total compensation, right? Like that's still a thing because there is a certain portion of the population that money does matter and compensation does matter. It's part of the question, right? Um, and, and, you know, when you consider that 80% of employees are in the wrong coverage because they're either overinsured or overexposed, you realize that that we've got to help people navigate to the right option and the right solution for them. And because if you don't, they're leaving $1,400 or $1,500 per household in compensation on the table that they're unnecessarily squandering, either because, again, they're, they got too much insurance or they got too much exposure. And retention is an issue. Those issues, those have always been the issue. No one ever has offered benefits simply because they're beneficent, right? Just because they're nice. They've done it because they want to... Um, you know, get, attract and retain the best employees. And though I made that comment about employees, you know, leaving and we need to reconsider the way we measure, what we don't want people to do is leave the company because benefits are perceived as bad, right? And so, you know, statistics show that 22% of all turnover is directly related or attributable to benefits and perceived benefits. And so, you know, um, uh, Benefit Focus did a, a study a couple of years ago where they to show through active engagement, you could move the needle on turnover by 
So we could reduce in essence, 37 of 22 is like 7%. So if I can stop 7% of my turnover by active engagement, it's saving me almost $1,000 per employee in turnover costs. So these are really significant dollars and the, none of this has changed. I think what has changed and what really needs to happen is we need to create much more of a hybrid approach, right? So we need to be able to meet people where they are and in the manner that they want to be met with this hyper-personalized experience. So the 26-year-old coming off their parents' coverage for the first time and the baby boomer need a totally different experience. My One of my biggest kind of like, our, you know, our value prop as a company, right, little shameless plug here for Enrollify, is that AI bots underpinned by machine learning are just moving people to bad decisions faster because they're, it's really, really linear in nature. And though they have data on people, you know, not everyone is the same. And, and I think that most people want a person to talk to. And so the best intelligence is not artificial. It's from a subject matter expert that can actually be empathetic and guide that person based on their own specific experience, right? It's what that worldview is. So we got to be able to meet people where they are, either virtually, right, to meet them when they're working remote or face-to-face -face where that's called for, but not give up the intimacy. I think call center is a terrible option. It's a terrible solution because it lacks, it's the same reason why, you know, why we have video on right now. There's a certain level of connection, of human connection that you get from nonverbal communication. Um, and, and I think that, that call centers lose it. So if you're not using technology like the one that we're using right now uh, for web conferencing with co-browsing and being able to share, I think you're missing a boat. But I think this amplification of a corporate narrative is probably the biggest opportunity. Um, and, you know, if, if I were going to say you've got great strategy, right, I love you is we got all these benefits. I do is when they get to the Ben Admin to make an election, the space in between is where the biggest opportunity is. And what I mean by that is that we have to neutralize employee apathy and we have to get them engaged. What's cool about COVID is right now is a moment in time where if you seize it, employees are now taking stock in their benefits, right? They realize that they have this fragility. They realize they have this exposure. It didn't take a cancer diagnosis for them to take a look at their benefits. They're now open to engaging actively. So this is the thing that companies have been wanting for years and years and years to take that strategy of cost containment and actually make it happen. And a lot of people are just going, oh, well, we're just going to throw these things up on a Ben Admin and hope people self-serve their way to a solution. Getting benefits is not the strategic imperative. It's the way that we all get compensated that if you're in the industry, but getting helping that company achieve its primary objectives of making people feel cared for, making them building loyalty to the organization, uh, understanding, having that human element um, is, is key right now. And so what we think is using omni-channel communication to broadcast, um, so voice broadcast, MMS, video, this kind of media content to help get consumers the kind of information that they need and then matching them with an empathetic subject matter expert is the difference right now. And in the moment of time that, that if you seize it really can change the, the trajectory for your clients. So um, Adam, real quick, just, um, you know, I, I think, it, well, not, I think if, if myself 10 years ago, uh, heck, even five, six years ago, if you would have said, Hey, we can be doing enrollments and getting participation and engagement and education uh, through to employees across the country vis-a-vis um, -vis a virtual self-serve environment, vis-a-vis -vis an app or a technology, vis-a-vis -a, -vis, uh, a call center, which I agree with you, but hopefully it's a video call center. Um, I would have slapped you in the face and said, you're crazy. I would have slapped myself in the face because, you know, you and I came from a business specifically as many of this, uh, the folks on this call where... <laughs> We would laugh at that. We would fight against that. We would tell employers every day how that won't work. And perhaps it was just, I don't know your opinion, maybe it was just the technology wasn't there for sure. Maybe we didn't have a push. We didn't have a reason to. So, you know, I, I, I tell people I had, a, I had a Zoom Pro account. I was doing virtual self-serve enrollments before it was cool to do virtual self-serve enro enrollments prior to COVID. Um, so again, using that word amplify 
COVID only amplified the, the necessity of where we're at now. And, you know, when I look at a platform like, uh, and I'll plug it because I think it's great. When I look at a platform like Enrollify, um, I look at it as an all-encompassing, all-in-one-place stop, one-place, uh, one-stop shop, I should say, for, um, for everybody uh, from the benefit broker, advisor, carrier rep, consultant, the salesperson, to the uh, employer, the HR, the admin, all the way down to the enroller, to the end user, the employee. Um, my question for you here, though, is when it comes to technology, um, do you, in general, think technology is going to continue to 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 take over, or do you think that the one-on-one -on -one in person enrollment uh, is going to uh, get back to the good old quote unquote good old days? You know, I, I no, I, I don't think it, I don't think we ever go back. Um, I think what's changed, and, and here's the thing, right? When we built Enrollify, we were trying to create more flexibility, right? That like that was a big part. We were trying to remove frag like the regional fragmentation and and the friction that existed in the process. We, you know, believed that the ecosystem was broken uh, for almost everybody and, and ironically wasn't benefiting anyone. That's our kind of our tagline. But, um, and we saw technology as a way to bridge some of that gap. I did that pre-COVID. What changed in COVID was the acceleration of consumers' adoption of technology. So I think where... Um, you know, two, three, four, five years ago, pre-COVID, if I had gone to a truck driver, you know, a, a union of truck drivers and said, hey, we want to do a web, you know, video, you know, uh, chat using Zoom, they'd be like, my guys are unsophisticated. They don't understand that. They, you know, they're never going to use an app. The reality is, is that every single person who had a kid in school or went to church or went to a funeral during COVID did so using Zoom. So that's what's changed, right? We, we saw a, 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 you know, a 12 year acceleration of adoption of technology in less than two years. That's the biggest change, right? So we, I just did a, a, you know, a municipal organization, municipality, thousand employees, right? Where um, they were convinced, no, this is an old school. These are low, you know, low uh, sophistication. It's, groundskeepers and, you know, and, and, and janitors and all sorts of different kind of municipal workers, they, they want face-to-face. -face. Well, interesting enough, our technology helped them. 84% of the employees schedule, schedule, actively schedule an appointment. They schedule the meeting instead of having someone show up and, you know, do a song and dance and try to corral people. But of those 84%, more than 70% chose to do a virtual meeting with their spouse at home, you know, in the evening after hours, right? So what was one more, you know, one, one Zoom meeting at the end of the day? It was less disruptive to the organization. Um, and that was their choice. Um, and so I think, I think that's the biggest change. It's not that we're not going back. It's that we need to meet people where they prefer to be met. And, um, you know, for a lot of, I, I actually think for a lot of people, there's a, there's, this is a differentiator. Why would you disrupt the workplace? Why would I come in and shut down your business and try, you know, like why, why wouldn't you look at, you know, having added flexibility or allowing people to be, be met with, um, you know, and, and, and educated in the language of their choice. Uh, there's so many advantages that technology brings. So I don't, I think I answered your question somewhere in there. No, you, you, you certainly did. And uh, for those here, I appreciate you sticking around and, and listening to both Adam and I. And if you have to go, by all means, uh, the recording will be sent out. But, uh, but while you're here, again, check out bcsf.com, uh, BCS Financial. You know, I do want to say one thing that um, I was talking to a broker the other day who um, was, uh, just didn't understand BCS. And, and he's like, I never heard of him. I would never do business with them. No offense, BCS. And you want to hear something really funny? I said, hey, have you ever um, bought an Amtrak? He said, yeah. I said, have you ever, uh, have you ever bought like travel insurance or cyber insurance or, or E&O? And he goes, yeah. I said, there's a really high chance that you're already a customer of BCS Financial because they white label a ton of travel insurance and cyber insurance and E&O insurance and, and stop loss. So um, 
long story short, he checked it out and he is a BCS customer. So uh, for those listening, you may also already be a BCS financial customer. Check out their website, bcsf.com. They have an incredible accident plan, CI plan, hospital plan, and a fixed medical indemnity plan. And for anybody also that is um, a specialist or uh, one of your verticals is hospitality, part-time, seasonal workers, restaurants, um, their, their medical indemnity program is literally designed for that. And it's very customizable. So um, check it out. Hit me up if you have any questions, um, Adam. Let me let me um, let me take it a little bit into a different direction, right? What is um, what's what's coming up on the horizon, right? Um, you've got technology. There's a lot of technology. Uh, I'm out there talking about how we can do virtual enrollments. Enrollment firms are still out there doing enrollments, uh, call center or no call center, uh, video call center, no video call center. And at the end of the day human resource professionals and large companies and small business owners alike, they're just confused. Um, what's some simple, quick takeaways that those listening today uh, who are advising and giving counsel to employers of all sizes, uh, what's something that they can be doing immediately starting literally today or tomorrow, uh, next week, that will help them, uh, uh, frankly, to be blunt, sell more uh, benefits and help more people? I mean, I think it starts with um, more than anything else is asking the right question, right? Like, you know, these, the, 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 I think a lot of times we get into the mode where we want to sell, you know, sell a product or sell a solution um, instead, of, instead of just, you know, asking a question of what the challenge is. Like, what are you, what are you facing? And so, um, you know, the questions are, are pretty straightforward, right? They're, they're, you know, pretty easy to identify, you know, how has this impacted your business? What are you doing to, you know, how has COVID changed? What are your biggest challenges that you're facing right now? And I think when you, when you ask them what their challenge is, right, like what's the biggest challenge your organization is facing? And then kind of second to that, um, how has COVID changed the way that you're approaching it? What you'll see is you'll identify you know, all of the different opportunities where you can position, um, you know, a value prop that includes this idea of amplifying corporate narratives. I think the biggest opportunity in our industry is helping them become that media company, right? So I just said, you got to be a media company first and then everything else you do after. And what I mean by that is how do you become the PR firm for the human for human resources department? And you know the missing ingredient. If you you know companies spend twenty two thousand dollars a year on their employee benefits, like why wouldn't you spend a hundred dollars a year to make sure your employees understood what they were getting and were making good decisions that were aligned with your corporate impact, you know your corporate strategies. And, and I use the illustration all the time when we're talking about our value proposition. I say, look, if you bought $22,000 worth of new technology for your lake house, would you try to install it with a handbook and a web portal? And they're like, well, no. I said, well, what would you do? Well, we'd hire Geek Squad. They'd come out. They'd install everything and show us the remote control. Like, our opportunity is to basically create, and this is, again, what Enrollify is about, is Geek Squad for benefits. Like match them with the person who has a subject matter expert who has no motive beyond just helping the consumer understand how to navigate all of that stuff, right? And if you can get that engagement in education, now all of a sudden you're able to amplify that narrative of caring, right? Allow them to draft their own messaging, use their voice, use their, you know, use the mayor of the county, use the, the, uh, the president of the company or the CEO or the person who's, who has the most influence. Create hyper-personalization that make people feel like more than just a number, right? Like the, the ability to deliver relevant hyper-personalized information to each person so that they can navigate what's important to them is, is, is essential giving them more flexibility to be met, meet when they want. Those types of things, I think, is where the biggest opportunity. And quite honestly, products have become commoditized. So you were talking about BCS. Like, I mean, just for a second, like, let's talk about, like, you know, the number of voluntary carriers when I started this business 25 years ago was like three, right? There were like three or four. There was Snoopy, there was the Duck, there was Colonial, and then there were like a few, like American Fidelity. Like, there were a handful of different carriers. Now there's like you know, a ton of them. And I think that what, what you want is, are they easy to work with? 
Do they pay their claims quickly? Do there, is their billing, you know, a disaster or does it work, right? And, and what are they doing to differentiate around engagement and education? What resources do they have? It's no longer paying for Ben Admin, right? Ben Admin is ubiquitous, right? That's about data integrity. Like we've solved for that, that portion. It's like, what else are you doing? What's next up? So, um, no, you hit the nail on the head and, it, you know, I want to go back to something. I want to really, really dig in and make sure that everybody uh, listening and anybody who's going to be listening uh, writes this part down. Notice what Adam said, how you got to be a PR, or a media company, basically a marketing agency. And for those that didn't catch it, when you, if you came on late or if you uh, didn't catch it on the replay, um, when I introduced myself, Eric Silverman, I'm not uh, an enhanced benefit guru or a voluntary sales guy or a broker, really. I'm a marketing agency that just happens to get paid through the sale and service and facilitation and enrollment and installation of insurance products. Marketing first. I'm a big journey versus the destination type of guy. So one of the um, quick hits and takeaways that I always um, share with every single one of my friends in the industry who ask me for advice, and it happens quite often, and I appreciate them thinking I can add value to their business, uh, but I'm candid and transparent to tell them instead of spending... 30 minutes of a 30 minute call or, or, an, or 50 minutes of an hour call talking about uh, benefits and product and service and carrier and how long you've been in business and how great your brand is and how quick you pay your claims. My advice to you candidly, spend 50 minutes of an hour talking about the journey. Talk about the marketing, how you're going to communicate and get the employees engaged, uh, all of the various ways that you have to bring to the table. The destination, although very important, right? The destination is your carrier. It's the claims. It's the it's the rate. It's the um, it's the uh, will they pick up the phone when you need them? Will they return your email? And again, extremely vital, very important. But that's the end game. That's the destination. If the journey isn't uh, really talked about, what's the difference? Employees aren't going to be engaged. Nobody's going to enroll, and it's all for naught. You're wasting your time. And I think it's, it, again, just getting back to asking the questions of like, looking at the current environment, what's your biggest, most pressing concern? How has COVID changed your needs to the strategy to meet them? Like, if you ask those two questions, they will tell you all of the issues. And then the answer is everything that you just said, Eric, right? Because they're going to say, like, we got people that have new anxieties. We've got five generations. We've got the great resignation. We've got low adoption of strategic imperatives. We've got increased competition for talent and, and low, you know, low unemployment environment. Um, you know, ultimately, benefits is about getting people to appreciate them and utilize them. And, but all of that communication is to get them. I'll give you one really interesting statistic that we have from our platform. So we had 345,000 employees last year. Our, our platform was used to help by different h &B entities to help move the needle on engagement and then facilitate education. Right now, surveys show that 50% of all employees are dissatisfied with their benefits. It's one of the biggest line items on a P&L. 50% are dissatisfied, right? And most of the feedback that you'll hear is it sucks, it's terrible, it's this or that. 94% of the employees that um, filled out a post-enrollment uh, survey that we have on our, on our app, kind of like, in an, like when you ride an Uber or Airbnb, 94% of those employees gave a five-star rating. So just active engagement and education, crafting this narrative of, of caring and engagement led to 94% five-star satisfaction. That's the objective. That's the goal. If you can get to that as a practitioner as in this space, I think then all of a sudden you're delivering the value because it means that you're, you're you know, aligning with the company's objectives. But so, none of it happens without what you said, Eric. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, you said it. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we're aligned on that. I mean, marketing is everything. And I tell you, I'll follow my own sword. And maybe, you're, maybe you and all the thousands of people you trained – uh, we're doing it this way years ago when you were in charge of them uh, the way I was too, but I never did that. I'll be blunt. I mean, <laughs> I'd go meet with a business owner or a broker advisor and I'd sit there and talk benefits and product and how great my carrier is. I would do that for, for the entire meeting and then finish with, oh yeah, we'll hang some posters up and you know, we'll get, we'll bring in some donuts in the morning. Like I didn't, I, I, I truly wish I could just snap my fingers and go back in time and adjust my sale because I, 
actually believe I would have done even better than I actually think I did. And I did okay. Nobody's crying for me. Um, Adam, what do you think? Yeah, but I mean, look, technology has changed. Right? I just mean like, from a communication perspective. But 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 you didn't have the re the resources that you had previously, right? Like I mean, you know, like there was a time when we got our news from the newspaper. Arguably, <laughs> probably was you know it was better and higher quality than it is today. But you know, um, I think you know, I think there's I think time is relevant, and I think what you have to do as a as a as a professional is you have to respond to the time. That's what this whole thing about COVID is. COVID is a defining moment where the entire industry gets to reset, reposition, and, and capitalize. Those that don't will end up losing market share, right? This is why, to me, you're talking, we're, 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 we're you know, the host, BCS, I think is in the, in the you know, is in the, in the driver's seat, right? Like, they, the, you know, the nimbleness of the smaller new entrants as opposed to the, you know, like larger entities that have been in the game forever that, you know, they, they struggle to get out of their own way or to adjust their strategy. Um, you really have to like push your cards in and go, okay, well, we're going to tip all the sacred cows. Yes, this is the way we've always done it, but, you know, maybe there's a better way. Um, I think, I think there's a real opportunity here to define, you know, the market as opposed to just following what you've always done. Yeah, dude. I mean, my gosh, I, I've been a big proponent of smaller boutique uh, carriers that have incredible product services, rates, et cetera. Again, all destination. But I'm a big fan of BCS and, and others like it that don't have that big marketing budget and that huge name uh, for many reasons. So I'll tell you one. One is, like you said, I agree. Uh, they can pivot on a dime. You can talk to the right person. You can make magic happen. Uh, you don't get that typically with the largest of large carriers. Number two that I really appreciate is um, the differentiation. So if you're a broker uh, or a carrier rep who's independent on this phone uh, or on the, uh, the Zoom web, web chat today, um, imagine when you're going in a meeting with brokers and employers, if you're just pitching the same old stuff, you're not doing anything really different than anybody else is, right? There's, there's tens of thousands of people doing the same thing. When I go in and I'm meeting with an advisor, broker, consultant, or I'm meeting with an employer, and I mention a carrier that they may or may not have ever heard of, that adds meaning. That, genu that genuinely generates curiosity. Um, and from a takeaway perspective, I tell you what, um, you now have the ability to do something that other advisors and brokers and consultants just aren't doing. Um, the, uh, you know, Adam, let me, let me ask you this. When it comes to uh, to, to your business and what you've seen as you've gotten, uh, uh, as you've been growing in Rollify, what's coming up on, um, uh, the end of the year? I mean, it's crazy to say we're, we're recording this on May 26, 2022. Um, is it too late? I know it's gonna sound crazy, but is it too late for anybody listening to be able to, um, learn and educate and implement some type of technology to really help them have a kick-ass third and fourth quarter? Uh, you know, I think technology makes it possible to like, uh, you know, act on these things a lot, you know, there's a lot less to learn, right? There's a lot more kind of um, user experience and, and, you know, like, as long as the technology that you're using is intuitive and easy, um, then, then, then absolutely not. Um, I, I think that the, the, we get so busy in the business that we fail to take a step back and go, how can this make me more operationally, you know, efficient? How can it allow me to, um, you know, create more revenue? How can it help me solve for bigger issues? How does it allow me to scale? I think those are the real questions and, and where technology is, is, is best. I mean, what we've done in our platform is we've taken a bunch of disparate utilities, we put it into one integrated solution that makes it, you know, so that any agency could take our software and instantly become the largest enrollment entity in the United States, right? Like apart from having the project manager, it's basically an enrollment firm in a box. You've got 4,000 benefit counselors that you have access to that have credentialed and growing. Um, you've got, you've got all the tools and resources. We don't do, we don't, you know, build Ben admin. We're not an enrollment firm. We're, we're a software company. That's it. Um, but you know, a lot of times, um, I'll show this to someone and they'll be like, that's amazing. It's great. I just don't have that person, right? 
for enrollment firms, there's never been more a better time right now, I think in history um, to be in the communication business because it's such a hot button. It's such a, there's a bit of backlash, I think, to um, Silicon Valley's efforts to disintermediate our industry, right? Like Zenefit's got punched in the face. I think, you know, AI bots underpinned by machine learning um, are, are kind of getting a similar, like more and more people say they want someone to talk to. They're, the narrative is changing. And I think, I think you've got to find this optimal experience of high touch and high tech. It's never too late, right? It's, it's never too late to learn or to improve your business or to find a way uh, to, you know, to, 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 you know, differentiate. I, I don't think anyway. So as we're starting to wrap up the top of the hour, anybody who has questions, please uh, don't be shy. Put them in the chat box. By all means, we Adam and I could talk for hours on this stuff, but we'd love to be hyper-focused and, and hear what's on your mind. Uh, real quick, before, uh, while we uh, wait and see if anybody has any questions before we go into our uh, final few, um, let me just take a second. Uh, as an appreciation, thank you for everybody coming on this uh, Zoom or anybody who is uh, listening on the playback. Um, I want to announce and talk about, if you haven't already seen, um, there is a uh, industry specific virtual conference coming up July 19th through July 21st, uh, hosted by uh, Walt Podgurski is a good friend of mine. He's on this call right now. Um, it's July 19th, to July 21st. It's all designed for voluntary benefit brokers, specialists, advisors, consultants, reps, um, and BCS. Uh, and my partnership allow us to give you a discount on the registration. So if you're interested uh, in joining the virtual session, it'll all be recorded and you can check it out anytime you want. If those dates don't work, uh, hit me up in the direct message on LinkedIn and I'm happy to get you a discount code. Um, thank you to Walt uh, for putting this together. It's truly needed in the voluntary space. And again, I can't thank uh, BCS Financial enough either. BCS is, uh, I'm telling you, they're the, the best kept secret in the voluntary space. I encourage you to check them out, bcsf.com. And again, as a thank you, them and myself, and also courtesy of Walt, we're going to be giving uh, those listening a discount code if you are open and interested and you want to check it out. I'll put it in the chat box uh, right now. Um, so, Adam, let me... Um, let me, uh, let me say, I want to give you a couple of minutes here to pontificate about what is on your mind. Because, I mean, I've known you for years. Um, you can go off in tangents sometimes. You have you strong opinions, which I think is really important. But, um, you know, let's, let's put your, uh, do me a favor, put your hat on. And the hat you're putting on right now is your old um, uh, territory vice president hat with a big carrier. And you got a lot of brokers that, that, that look up to you. You got a lot of uh, carrier reps and, and agents that look up to you and, and new people in the business. <clears throat> um, what's something that you would advise them or some things, you can name a couple things that you really hope that they, they don't take for granted and that ultimately they start putting together so they can grow their business? I think the biggest thing that I, yeah, like the salesman to me just like got all fired up and excited and like, you know, let's do um, some elevate with Adam right now. Right. Having led, having led, you know, 5,000 people, I think the instant thing to me is that an old prospect is not a bad prospect. Like, like you should be thinking this is the greatest opportunity in recent history to reassert yourself into relationships of, you know, where maybe the timing wasn't right to reopen the door with a new story. And, um, you know, I used to always love, I, there's a phrase that I used to use all the time, which is everything has changed. <clears throat> and, you know, everything's changed since the last time we talked, you know, everything has changed in the last 24 months. In, in terms of the benefits, everything we knew to be true is, is different. Um, and you've always, you know, prided yourself on having best in class products and best in class services, but your ability to, as a professional, to reimagine the story for the moment now is something your peers aren't doing. That's your differentiator. And uh, if you go to them with, you know, with, uh, you know, research that shows that consumers are tired of being sold and they want to be advised and they need help navigating the complexities, all of a sudden the, the, the HR departments, instead of saying, no, 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 we don't really want to do this actively. We're just going to throw it out there. They're like, oh my gosh, you can actually deliver one-on-one -on -one engagement support and help us 
you know, solve all these problems. Um, you know, so that dream client that you, uh, that, that you, you know, always had like drove by and wished, call on them. Like this is your opportunity to like, you know, insert yourself back in there or, or go after that client that you never had the guts to get in the past. I love it. I love it. Uh, come on, you know, you got one more in you because I know you're getting excited. Uh, and by the way, check it out. Um, this stuff is not stale dated. A lot of you don't realize uh, or may not remember, um, Adam has a widely successful and huge network on YouTube, his Elevate with Adam uh, YouTube series. I don't know if you can quickly find the link and drop it in the comment, Adam. I don't have it. Uh, I wish I did. But the reality is check it out on YouTube, Elevate with Adam. He's been featured on the Grant Cardone show. Um, I'm, I'm, try I'm, I'm single-handedly trying to get him to bring it back. Um, but it is like, I don't know, hundreds of episodes of, uh, of just sales tips and it, and, and, and it applies to anything in sales, but specifically hyper-focused to voluntary benefit producers and sales reps and brokers. Um, Adam, what's something else that, that you would guide, right? I'm a new agent in the industry. I'm calling you up. I say, Adam, you're a legend. What do I do? I, I don't know where to get started or my business is stalemated. What do I do? Um, Sorry, sorry. Give me that question again. I didn't hear the last part of it. That's right. You're looking for that YouTube uh, link. There. Oh, that's, see, I know that's right there. I just couldn't. Kendall find got it. Right. Kendall got it before me. Oh, even better. Oh, Kendall did. I thought that was you. All right. So uh, I just said I'm new in the business, right? I'm 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 maybe a few years old in the business. Maybe I'm even ten years old in the business, but I'm struggling, right? Things are just aren't going my way. I had a rough COVID. I didn't adapt to technology. Uh, I'm looking up to you. You're my manager. What do you say? I mean, don't just give me a, a, a go get them tiger um, speech, but you know, what's something I can uh, take as a concrete way to, to get back in the game right away and, and finish second quarter, but most, no doubt start out third quarter even stronger. You know, I think you, gotta, you, you, you have to focus in today's environment more than ever on delivering extraordinary value to all your stakeholders. And, um, you know, th this is not new, but I think, I think salespeople that are chasing dollars um, will oftentimes come up short when they're, when they're chasing delivering value to their, con you know, their constituents, they'll end up way ahead of the curve. Um, and, and again, products have become commoditized, become a specialist in communication and education and solving for the pain points that a company, you know, is really experiencing by asking the right questions. Um, talk less, listen more, which is something that, you know, is a struggle for guys like you and I. Uh, but at the same time, I think uh, we've, we've been able to do it adeptly enough over, over time to be able to, to identify where we can solve those problems and then go out and, 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 and solve it. Um, you know, I think that COVID, if you've suffered a little bit, like during COVID, it should, it should really force you to re-examine your go-to-market strategy. Um, and if you didn't suffer during COVID, um, good for you. Uh, you still need to re-examine your go-to-market strategy. Uh, we're in a really dynamic time. And I think that, you know, um, if you revel in your success and achievement, quick, quickly you're going to taste failure. And if you get mired in your failure, you'll never get to that success that's right around the corner. So I think it's I think it's out there. So that's the motivational speech, I guess, for the day. There you go. I love it. Everybody check out Enrollify.io. Um, but as Adam specifically told me to tell you, he wants you to spam his DM and try to sell him stuff. No, that's not exactly what he said. But he did say, which I thought was really cool of him, if you have any questions, thoughts, or ideas, or you want to learn more about Enrollify, um, don't go to his website, check it out, but don't get into his sales funnel. I love when he told me to say that. He said, you're welcome to go direct to the source, the founder, creator, owner of Enrollify, hit him up on LinkedIn. And that way you can just get right to the, uh, to the main person. How cool is that? How about, what if every time we prospect an account, we didn't have to go through a sales funnel and we could just go right to the source? Well, here you have that, that, that gold mine opportunity. It, listen, I drives me crazy. I hate technology from that standpoint like technology should increase the human experience it should not replace the human experience right like and and i think all too often like we get into like these bots this chat bot for customer service or into a sales funnel and we just keep getting the hit and spam like you know pick up the phone have a conversation with somebody 
uh, respond to an email or to a, a, a text. I think it's, it's, um, it's what's desperately missing. Uh, I, I appreciate you, Adam. We're going to wrap up. And if anybody has any other questions, please put them into the question chat box, either or. Um, and, you know, guys, um, again, please uh, uh, give a, um, a silent because they're not going to be able to hear you. But a silent round of applause. I appreciate uh, BCS Financial for putting this together. This is the first in a series of web chats uh, that I'm going to be helping them with. Um, the next one is going to be uh, in late June. Stay tuned. Remember, even if if you can't make it live, it is amazing just to simply register, and that way you're going to get the playback sent to you. Um, next month, it's going to be my good friends Andy Neary and Ryan Miller, and it's not going to be as much focused on insurance and benefits, but more so focused on sales, marketing, uh, and uh, branding. So it's completely different um, dichotomy to what we talked about today, and we're going to try to switch it up and have a lot of fun. So um, stay tuned for that. Check out bcsf.com. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to my podcast, Adam Michaels uh, was a guest just a couple months ago. Check that out. Check out all the other incredible uh, guests. That is rockstarsrocking.com. Adam, it's been a pleasure, my friend. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Thanks, BCS. Thanks uh, for having me. Appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. And thank everybody for joining. Thanks, Kendall, uh, who's behind the scenes. And uh, this has been the first episode of the BCS Financial Web Chat Series. Stay tuned for next month for next month's episode.